welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today's Real Loud is called Major Taylor, a story about the first black cyclist and the first black world champion. Take a look. Major Taylor by J.P. Miller. A race to the finish line. Have you ever tried to win a contest? Have you ever worked hard to reach a goal? Marshall Major Taylor understood how that felt. He knew what it meant to work hard and be determined. Major zoomed around the track on his trusty bicycle. He knew he must be close to the finish line. He had been riding for a long time. He was in an endurance race that was supposed to last six days. He had not been in many races, but he was already a leader in this one. With hard work, he would become a leader in sports history too. A star in training, Major Taylor was born in 1878. He became best friends with the son of his father's boss. As a gift, the family gave Major a bicycle. Around and around in circles, Major rode. He raced up ramps and downstairs. Major loved his new bicycle. He had not owned it long, but he was already good at doing tricks with it. Bicycles had not been around for very long at the time. More people were starting to use them instead of horses and buggies. The owner of the Hay and Woolworths bicycle shop hired Major to advertise bikes and teach people to ride them. At the shop, Major did bicycle tricks in an intention getting soldier's uniform. People gave him the nickname Major because of his uniform. Making money. Major made $6 a week at his job at the bicycle shop. He also got a free bike worth $35. The owner of the bicycle shop got a big idea. He would enter Major in a race, 10 miles, about 16 kilometers long, to advertise the shop. However, he only wanted Major to finish the first mile. Major went to the race, not knowing what to expect. There was a pack of riders at the starting line. He was the only African-American rider. The race started. Major pumped his pedals as fast as he could. As he rode, he passed riders going uphill Pass them at the one mile mark and pass them to cross the finish line. At age 13, Major had won his first bicycle race. It was only the beginning. Major knew he could be a winner. He wanted to learn how. A cycling club in his hometown would only allow white members. He and other African-American riders formed the Seesaw Cycling Club instead. His racing victory got the attention of Louis Birdie Munger. He owned a bicycle company. He became Major's mentor. Birdie wanted Major to do a short professional race. If he won, he could enter another race that will last six days. Major was only 18 years old. He had never entered a professional race before. If he could do this, many more great things could be in his future. Major sped to victory in the first race. Next up was the big six day endurance race at Madison Square Garden, an indoor arena in New York City. The race started with 28 cyclists some white people did not like that a black man was racing along with them, but Major did not let that stop him. The race was very difficult. By the second day, Major could no longer keep the same speed. 
He began racing for eight hours and resting for one hour. His stomach hurt, his head hurt. On the fifth day, a white cyclist who did not like that a black man was racing made him crash. Still, he kept pedaling his bike. Over those six days, Major rode 1,732 miles, about 2,787 kilometers. He finished in eighth place. This was incredible for someone who had not done this kind of race before. Making history, that race was only the beginning. Soon, Major had set seven world records. He became the first African-American to win a world championship in cycling. He became famous. He did not stop, even when white riders did things like throw ice water in his face during the race. He gave other black cyclists hope that they could succeed too. Breaking the record, in 1899, Major biked a mile in one minute and 19 seconds. He set a new world record. People called him the fastest man in the world. For 14 years, Major Taylor continued to be a leader in cycling. He retired from the sport at age 32 and moved to Chicago, Illinois. Major had earned a lot of money from cycling. Unfortunately, he lost almost all of it because of the Great Depression. When he died in 1932, he had no money and not many people knew about him. He did not even have a gravestone at the cemetery where he was buried. This important leader seemed to have been lost to history. But Major Taylor would not be forgotten after all. People honored him as a leader after he died. In 1948, a group of cyclists told a bicycle company owner about Major's life. The owner paid for Major's grave to be moved and marked. Several cycling clubs host events to honor his life each year. There's even a monument to him in Worcester, Massachusetts. He was more than a leader in races. He was a leader in sports and history as well. I felt I had my day and what a wonderful day it was too. Major Taylor. Don't forget to support by hitting the like button and subscribing. See you next time.